Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Jesus Doctrine. Today, I want to talk to you about Dante Wright and racism. Obviously, I'm aware that Dante Wright was fatally shot by a police officer during a routine traffic stop in the United States of America. I also am a person, a young black male that lives in the United Kingdom in a city of Birmingham, an inner city that's, of, that's oftentimes pulled over by the police due to racial profiling. I'm not denying that. I have experience of racism within an inner city because of the way that you look. However, I'm also saying that I do not agree with the rioting, with the looting and with the emotional and irrational responses that are being played out right now across America because the police have killed another innocent black male. Or at least that's a narrative that we're being led to believe. Now, I'm not here to slander the name of the dead. I'm not here to con condemn him or to condemn the officer that shot him. I'm here to give a thoughtful, biblical perspective on what I'm seeing in the media and the news yet again in America, because facts don't seem to mean a thing. So let's start off with the scriptures and what Jesus said to begin with. Jesus said this in Matthew 7 verse 1. It reads, Judge not that you may not be judged. For with the judgment that you pronounce, you will be judged and the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Right now, across America, people are follow, failing to listen to the words of Jesus. Jesus said, be careful about your judging because the way that you judge people, it will be judged against you. If you're going out looting and rioting, if you are somebody going onto the streets screaming, it was because he's black, screaming, it's all down to racism and you don't know the facts. I'm saying this, you may have experienced racism, but that doesn't give you the right and every single incidence to call everything racism before you know any of the facts and the situation. The hearsay that the communities are spreading around is making the world violent and dangerous and is going to cause problems to other people within our communities. We have got to be careful about what we choose to say and the words and the judgments that we choose to make. We're not taking it no more. We're gonna be out here all night. They set a curfew at seven o'clock because they knew we was coming back at seven o'clock. That's if it's a fight that they wanted, then that's what they gonna get. I'm tired of it. We tired of it. It's gonna be over a thousand people here tonight to say the same exact thing that I'm saying. We tired. We have heard from law enforcement about the crowd throwing bottles and bricks at officers and police using tear gas to disperse them. According to law enforcement, arrests have begun. This is all following the deadly shooting of a 20-year-old black man, Dante Wright, yesterday by a Brooklyn Center police officer. We showed you this earlier. The Citizen Reporter tweeted this where you can see the inside of the store with broken glass and trashed displays. We learned a lot of new information today about what happened before, during, and after the traffic stop that led to Dante Wright's shooting by a Brooklyn Center police officer. Jennifer Hoff takes us through what we know, and we do want to warn you, some of the body camera video you're about to see is hard to watch. The Brooklyn Center Police Chief releasing unedited body cam video of the shooting that took Dante Wright's life, a rare move this early in the investigation. It starts by showing several officers approaching Wright's vehicle. The chief saying he was pulled over Sunday afternoon around 2, originally for expired tabs. The chief also said he had something hanging from his rearview mirror. The officers then found out Wright had an outstanding warrant from April 2nd. Court documents reveal he didn't show up to court on charges related to carrying a pistol without a permit last month and fleeing police last year. And then when they tried to arrest him, the chief says Wright gets back in the car. A struggle ensues. An officer yells taser protocol when one will be deployed. But instead, the chief says the officer accidentally grabs her handgun instead, shooting right once. The Hennepin County Medical Examiner says the 20-year-old died from a gunshot wound to the chest. Let's start off with this. Dante made decisions. Dante had a warrant against his name for possession of a firearm that was illegal. When they pulled him over for not having a car registered to his name, they ran his insurance and found that he didn't have any. When they ran his name, they found out that he had an existing warrant for holding an illegal firearm. When they ran his name, his record of resisting an aggression against the police came up. When they ran his name, 
This man went from being a compliant young man that was outside of the car to realising that he was going to be arrested because of the firearm that he'd previously been in possession of that was illegal. He gets back in his car and tries to drive off, even with the police pulling firearms in him and threatening to discharge a weapon, a taser against him. Now, the police officer in the heat of the moment, the female officer, actually didn't pull her taser. She pulled her pistol and she discharged one round into the chest of Dante. Dante drove a couple of blocks with his girlfriend before crashing his car and dying from the gunshot he sustained. I want to be clear about this. Dante was the one. Dante was the one that made the mistake of carrying an illegal gun, of not registering the car, and then when being pulled over, rather than paying the consequences for his actions and facing up to things, he was the one that resisted and put the police in a confrontational situation where they told him that they were going to draw weapons. And when he heard that it was a non-lethal weapon, he did not cease, but he continued the same course of action. Unfortunately, the, fire, the officer pulled her gun, not her taser. Now, I want to say something about this. This woman has accidentally killed a suspect. She's probably going to be traumatized. She's probably going to be suspended, maybe discharged from the police force at best. She's going to have issues. She's going to have nightmares. She's going to be messed up. I don't believe that many women or even men join the police force because they're bad people that want to shoot a young black male. She's going to be just as traumatized, as jacked up as anybody about the death of an innocent boy with the best years of his life in front of him. Brooklyn Center Police releasing this body camera video of when police say an officer intended to use her taser and instead accidentally shot her gun, killing 20-year-old Dante Wright. Police say after Wright was stopped for a traffic violation Sunday afternoon, they determined he had an outstanding warrant for a misdemeanor offense. Police began taking him into custody. There was a struggle, and as Wright tries to get into his car, the officer can be heard yelling, Taser! 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 taser. But the chief of police saying the officer fired her gun instead. The officer heard saying she just shot him. Police never finding a weapon in Wright's car and calling the incident an accidental discharge. This appears to me, from what I viewed and the officer's reaction in distress immediately after, that this was an accidental discharge that resulted in the tragic death of Mr. Wright. The car continued to drive for several blocks before crashing into another car. Wright was pronounced dead at the scene, despite paramedics trying to save him. There's nothing I can say to lessen the pain of Mr. Wright's family. What I can do is convey my deepest sympathies to the Wright family and be transparent with the information I'm aware of at this time. This is Kim Potter. Potter has been with the Brooklyn Center Police Department for 26 years. Now, as recently as 2019, she was serving as the police union president for that department. Potter has been honored in the past with the Medal of Merit for helping rescue people from a house fire. But she also, in the heat of the moment, has to weigh up that here I have someone with a warrant, with a history of aggression, that may have a weapon in the car, that's getting back into the car against police instruction. She's also got to consider her own children, her own family, her, the other officers in her own life. So she's drawn out a taser, a non-lethal weapon. But in the heat of the moment, she hasn't pulled the taser, she's pulled her gun. She discharges it once and she's seen on the video realising, oh my goodness, I've just discharged my gun into him, I shot him. You can see the shock in the video recordings. This isn't a woman that's bloating that, yeah, I shot that racist word, the N word. She's not doing any of that. This is an accident from a female police officer that could have been avoided if the man had complied, could have been avoided if the man didn't have a warrant for his name, could have been avoided if he would just have gone in to be allowed them to arrest him and let this misdemeanor. I mean, it worries me that we're calling the illegal carrying of a gun a misdemeanor in a country where they're trying to make legal guns for people that don't break laws to protect themselves illegal now, people that carry illegal guns. They're going to call it a misdemeanor. That worries me greatly because who is it are going to be walking the street carrying the guns, knowing that no good person has a gun to protect themselves? Those that do misdemeanors. I don't know how they can call it a misdemeanor. Surely that's a felony, carrying an illegal firearm. Anyway, let me not judge the man for his actions. He's made mistakes and he did not deserve to die for them. I will say this. It wasn't an execution. It wasn't a trial. It wasn't a verdict. It wasn't a guilty sentence. This is an accident that's happened when someone resists the police. 
And therein lies an interesting point. Whatever we sow in life, we'll reap. If we sow a life of violence and of hostility and aggression, don't be surprised when by accident or deliberately someone pulls a gun and shoots at you, somebody tries to knife you, or someone tries to apprehend you and uses an excessive measure of force that they did not mean to. There's a certain kind of lifestyle and behaviour that we as people, as Christians, cannot condone. We are told, we're ordered in the scriptures to obey the governing authorities so that their life may be easy because they do not draw the sword for no reason. They do not bear the sword for no reason. Why is he saying this? Because governments have authority to use deadly force and to bring justice and to bring situations into control. Therefore, we're told to obey them, even though oftentimes governments can be evil and oppressive and demonic. I'm not denying all those things. We are told to comply with the law of rule and order in government. The only time a Christian should disobey government is when it comes directly against the rulership and the guide, the guidance of God. Even when we don't like it, if they're telling you about how you too or not to worship, that's different. But generally, Christians should obey the law of the land and listen to the governing authorities. Dante doesn't. And the consequence of it was that they did reach for the sword. They did reach for a gun or a taser or a weapon and discharge it into him. Dante and the police officer in the heat of the moment made mistakes. Now, what about you and I? What about the average American? American. I live in England. I do not see rioting on the streets right now. But that's not the case in America right now. America is currently facing a situation that people that in the after events have found out some details, but probably not all the details, and have decided that they're going to call this racism. Stop. If you are going to riot, loot and protest without knowing any of the facts, don't be surprised when you stand in a court and they don't know any of the facts and they accuse you without any of the facts and sentence you. The way that you are judging people is the way that it will be measured back to you. People listen to me. This isn't about getting justice at the moment. This is about common sense. This is about thinking. There is a spiritual principle that Jesus speaks of that's at work that we need to be on the right side of sowing and reaping. If you do good, then you shall receive good. But if you do evil, guess what? Evil is going to come back to you. Sometimes things come back to you multiplied. You sow a lie, someone tells you a bigger lie. You tell the truth and you do good, someone will reward you with something even greater. There is a principle at work in this world. It's spiritual. We've got to be on the right side of the law and we've got to be on the right side of God because God is the one that ultimately is going to judge. Now, regarding the spiritual law, what you sow, you shall reap. Let me tell you this. You might not receive it all in this life. There's probably people listening thinking, oh, sowing and reaping. But you know what? I know people that did a whole lot of good and only evil and death and badness and sickness and disease and real sad situations and circumstances came back to them. Well, I promise you this. Maybe that was in the short term. But if we look beyond this life, I promise you at the judgment on judgment day, we will all receive what we're due because God is surely fair. A lot of the time in life now, we receive a lot of what we've sown. But if we don't, don't worry. It still has time to catch up with you on Judgment Day. Nobody gets away with anything. The only time that you will ever get away with anything is if you are made brand new and forgiven by the blood of Jesus. He washes away all of your mistakes and all of the sins that separate you from God. But even then, when you become a born again believer, when you become a Christian and when you have the spirit of God at work living in your life, even then the mistakes that you committed in the past, you may still find that you've got to pay the price for, that you still got to do the time for. Because although God forgives you, it doesn't mean that society and that mankind have to forgive you. You have a relationship with God, but it doesn't change what the law of the land says. There are some instances where God works miracles to get people off. But generally speaking, God wants us to pay the price for the mistakes that we've made in this life. And Jesus came so that we wouldn't have to pay the price when we stand before the almighty God on judgment day. You might suffer the consequences of your mistakes in this life, but there is a day coming that you're going to stand before God. And if you have not got right with him, that you will pay the consequences for your mistakes for all eternity. I ain't getting into hell and I don't want to preach that. 
I know what it is to have problems with the police and to be pulled over. I've experienced my fair share of racism myself. But I want to bring that little disclaimer about what you sow, you shall reap. Because there will be people listening that don't believe it. I promise you, I assure you, the scriptures teach it. It is going to be the case. So I want to come to this now. One of the things that really upsets me is people are chanting, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace. You know, we had 30, 40 more years to live. Got cut down short. You know, that's not cool. No justice, no peace, no justice, no peace. And the reason that scenes like those really trouble me is because I don't think people have an understanding of what they're doing. For when I read the Bible, the Bible is clear to me. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Listen to that. Righteousness, peace and joy. The order is important. It means that in the kingdom of God, that in the spiritual that when we do right, righteousness, the net result is that we have peace and that we don't have to be afraid of the police or our brothers and sisters or our neighbours because we haven't done anything wrong. As a result of doing the right thing, we have peace in the given situation. And as a result of peace, we then begin to experience the joy of the Lord because we are no longer at war with God. We're no longer at war with our brothers and sisters, with the police or with the government righteousness peace and joy and it always matters and so when people say no justice no righteousness no peace you're quite right but it starts with people acting right when you're going out and illegally rioting protesting and tearing everything down you have no right to speak about no justice no peace you're not acting righteously you're not doing the right thing I could understand if the details came out and there was a police officer acting viciously that hadn't been suspended from duty, that was denying that she's a killer, that's deliberately gone out there with racist agendas and motivations. But that's not what we're looking at. This isn't the case of systematic racism. There are so many cases of systematic racism. Why are people protesting and looting for cases where there's been an incident, an accident to discharge of a weapon and a man's died? Why are we protesting what we can see to be an accident. Let me continue. The Bible says in the verse before righteousness, justice and peace, it says this, do not let what you regard as good be spoken of as evil. The intentions of the police officers there were good. They were trying to uphold the law. Don't demonize people doing their job for doing what is right. She's made a mistake, yes. Did it lead to the end of her life? It did indeed. And she, I'm sure, I'm sure she regrets it. And I'm sure she's going to regret that for the rest of her life. It doesn't bring him back. It doesn't change what's happened. But I'm telling you, there is a consequence that will follow for that officer. And even if it's not a sanction by the police, it's something that she has to live with. I don't know if I could do a job like that after doing being involved in a fatal shooting and taking someone's life. I don't know if that woman's going to find torment for the events and what's transpired there. There is a consequence for every action. Be sure of that much. But I can't demonise the police for doing their job and trying to take a man off the streets that's been known to carry a weapon that is a danger to society. I'm not apologising for that. There are going to be those that are going to argue the man was only pulled over for a misdemeanour for having a traffic violation because he was a black male. To that, I have to say is white males get pulled over too. And when they comply with the police, they'll be allowed to go. And if they resist the police, then the same sort of shenanigans of doing evil, sowing evil and reaping evil will come back to them. I promise you. It's a common thing amongst people that have been in trouble with the police and with the law. And it is that they receive exactly what they sowed into the system. I'm saying it as a fact. Unfortunately, once you've got one or two offences, you can then become profiled as a repeat offender, which means that now the police deal with you differently. I understand it. It's for the police's own protection. They know you. They understand that you could be a risk to them because they've met you before. So now they approach you differently. If you don't want to be in that place, 
change the way you're behaving. Don't commit crimes. Do what is right. We have got to be so careful. We've got to be so careful as human beings living in the world that when wrong is done, that we don't respond by doing wrong back, by acting in exactly the same way. The police officer was flustered in the heat of the moment when she made the wrong decision. Dante made some decisions in the past that were wrong, that were mistakes. That's all gone. That's happened. His life's gone. We're not going to dwell on that and pull him under the bus. What we are going to do is we're going to look at the decisions that people are making right now. People like you and I that weren't involved in the event. People like you and I that have the time. We don't have to act immediately. We don't have to be moved by a wind or a rush of emotions. We can process everything that's happened before making a rational and a logical decision as to what we're going to do. Right now, I'm upset about what's happening because it feels like the innocent people that get hit by stray bullets or people that have genuinely experienced racial oppression by the police are being ignored while we target and while we try and make heroes and martyrs of a number of individuals from the black community that have done great heinous crimes that have horrendous records that are, have existing warrants or drugs in their system and they seem to be the people that we defend the most. I know that justice for Injustice for one person is an injustice for all. But what we're not, we're talking about now is we're actually defending the worst kinds of people. And I'm concerned that there's a generation watching of young males and women that are going to look on and they're going to see that actually, no, every time the police get involved, that the police are always in the wrong. No one is ever going to acknowledge that resisting arrest is a problem because we protest and we support those that resist arrest and the police get aggressive with them. I think that we're setting a real bad precedent to our children about how to respond with the police. And if we don't break the cycle, what we're sowing will be reaped by our children and by future generations and their relationships with the police or with their relationship with lawlessness and how that propagates. It might be the way that it goes in a few years time that the police in America are disbanded and defunded and you've put all your money into preventative measures. And so now when a crime is committed, there is no police response to protect you. And the issue of lawlessness begins to escalate. We should be aiming, we should be aiming to try and prevent people from doing the wrongs in the first place, to get people to respond rightly in the first place. The problem isn't the policing of the world. The problem, part of the problem is that people are not doing right. Righteousness, peace and joy. Let me go to the children of Israel in the scripture. In the days of Isaiah the prophet, the children of Israel have been taken captive. They're being carried into Babylon. They're going into captivity to foreign oppressive governments. Listen to what Isaiah reads. Well, he writes and he reads, and the effect of righteousness will be peace and the results of righteousness, quietness and trust forever. My people will abide in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places. If we would just encourage people to do the right things, if we would spend as much money in encouraging people to do right as what we do to protest, against institutions that have been set up to police people that do wrongs. Let's be clear about this. The police is an institution that is set up primarily to take people that do wrong off the streets, to take people with warrants or that are committing crimes off the street. If we protest against the police doing what they were set up for, we're going to have less righteousness and then we're going to find that we have no peace that we have no security and that we have no safety. I don't always see eye to eye with every ruling that the police have to back up and follow and enforce, particularly with COVID. However, I want to be very clear that following the law of the land is something that you need to do if you want to have righteousness, peace and joy of the Holy Spirit working in your life. I want to be very, very clear about this. I send my regards to anyone watching or any family member or anyone that knows Dante. It, he shouldn't have had to die that way. He shouldn't have had to die that way. They shouldn't have used lethal force. But for anyone that wants to go further than that and wants to go now and riot and loot and cause distress and cause further harm, I want to ask you the question, are you ready to be judged by the same standard without evidence and without facts 
that people are using against you because your day in front of a police officer or in front of court or in front of someone that is going to misjudge you is coming. If you want to do well, do that which is right. I get pulled over far too often because I live in an inner city, because I have a certain complexion and look and because I'm a male. Let's be honest about this. And I'm anxious about it because I'm aware of racial prejudice. But I've done nothing wrong. I know that they can run my name. I know they can run my car. I know they can run my insurance. And I ain't got nothing to worry about because I do what is right. I'm still anxious because of the thoughts of racism. But I tell you this, I'm comfortable in the sense that I know that they have nothing to use against me, provided I respond right. Police officers don't even carry guns in the UK most of the time. But still, when I'm pulled over by the police, I'm very careful to be seen to be not hostile. I'm very careful to be seen as someone not fidgeting or agitated, somebody that's not armed. I'm very careful about the way that I interact with authority because I know that they are the ones that can carry and use a force and can legally arrest me for whatever means they want to declare. So I'm very careful about my interactions with the police. Why? Should I have to be? No, I probably shouldn't have to be. But I am careful because I understand that there is an authority that they're not afraid to use. And this is the point. As Christians, we have got to learn to function under and with authority. People cannot have the power of God at work in their life if they will not obey the God-given authorities that function in this earth, even to authorities that they might not see just as right. It's really important to understand that authority is God-given, even authority that's taken up by evil and treacherous people. God has permitted and God has allowed it to be. But the way that we respond to it as Christians is crucially important. Don't burn the streets. Don't protest. Seek real justice for Dante and his family. Seek for reform in the ways that mean the most in America. Change the world through love, through obedience. Let your righteousness testify and change the world. Don't be quick to use racism. There's a lot of things in this world that are the result of racism. However, not everything needs us to call and to use the race card straight away. Let's try and look through other means to talk and to communicate. We don't want to raise our children in a world that the race card is always going to be their go-to get out of jail card rather than dealing with real issues where they could have done better. If we get into the habit of rioting and protesting for these kind of matters, we're making the world worse and more dangerous. And so there you have it. That's my honest take. Our behaviour is crucially important. As children of God, we ought to behave as children of God. Don't be quick to bring a railing accusation against people without first coming to the facts of the matter. Because of the way that you judge people might be the way that you're brought to court one day and it's used against you. Be very, very careful. So please like, comment and subscribe to my channel, Jesus Doctrine. I know this is a bit of a different one. I know it's strange to hear me speaking about this matter, but I'm speaking about it because I am afraid. I'm not fearful. I'm concerned that this is going to be a spiral that keeps running through America and running through a Christian nation, potentially. Why? Because people are unhappy with what's happening. But it, do what is right first. Do what is right. Do what is right. Do right before yourself and before God, first and foremost, before trying to bring justice to every person that's experienced injustice in this world. Do right. You're meant to look after your neighbours and those in need. And you can't do that whilst you've put a target on yourself because you're doing wrong. Protest for matters that mean something to you, where you have a set agenda. The second that things fall into rioting and looting, do not condone. Stand firmly against, oppose any voice saying, I understand why they're doing that. Right now, you are doing the devil's work. I'm saying it. I understand why they're doing it but it's still wrong. I am not condoning it. I won't show any support for it because you are doing the devil's work, bringing chaos and disorder into this world. Righteousness will never flourish whilst we support the very people that are bringing chaos and disorder. 
We can fire. We can change officials. We can defund the police. What we can't do is we can't defund, we can't elect, and we can't force the masses to not riot. So when you empower people to behave in that kind of a way, you are doing something that you cannot reverse the course of. Think about your actions. Pray for America. Pray for the police. Pray for yourself. Do what is right and get yourself out of trouble and you will have nothing to fear. Please like, comment and sub subscribe to my channel, Jesus Doctrine. The Washington County attorney, Pete Orpit, is going to be the one handling this case. I spoke with him tonight. He tells me he plans to meet with the BCA tomorrow morning to get that case. Now, he also wants to meet with the right family. And after that, he tells me he will make a charging decision as quickly as possible, likely within days.